St. Lucia has been cultivating cocoa for many years. However, there's still much that technical experts don't know about the sector's impact on the local economy and the challenges facing the farmers who toil the land. Field officers recently held a confab at the NSDC building in Viewfort ahead of a planned outreach to find out what makes the mostly informal sector tick. Chief Executive Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, Camuel Jabatiste, is leading the charge. In terms of the number of farmers producing, the acreage under cultivation, what it is that the farmers are doing with the cocoa, where it is that the cocoa is actually going to in terms of products, whether it's chocolates, cocoa sticks or exports. And so now we are sending our extension officers out there to basically engage the farmer in a conversation to see what is happening with the cocoa, what are the challenges the farmers are facing, uh, what are the issues in terms of sustainability, in terms of farmers' own commitments, in terms of you know, what are the, the, the res, uh, re returns from the cocoa investments. We're also looking at issues of pest and disease and how we as a ministry could, could strengthen what the farmers are doing. Another critical component of the exercise is the profile of the typical St. Lucia cocoa farmer, including their contribution to the local economy. Who are the people involved in the processing of cocoa, particularly the cocoa stick um, producers? Um, what is it that they're doing after they've produced it? Is it being sold locally? Is it being exported? If it is exported, we want to work with them and, of course, perhaps the Ministry of Commerce to formalize some of these informal markets that we currently have because we are not able to track it and to see the cocoa's contribution to, to GDP and to the agriculture sector. We're also looking at... Um, you know, what, what conditions are these fields in? Do the farmers have the opportunity to, to expand their cocoa production? We have a number of areas like Maho and, 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 and in the Denry Valley where the farmers have come away from bananas. The slopes are bare. Are they willing to go in there and put in cocoa uh, in terms of its, its, its carbon sequestration, in terms of providing forest cover? Um, these are some of the bits of information we need to go out there and extract from the farmers. Although the technical experts at the Ministry of Agriculture cannot dictate the direction of the industry, they hope to avail the farmers of prospective economic opportunities and attendant support. We, we cannot force it on them, but we want to ensure that the farmers are aware that there are opportunities to expand what they're doing. Um, particularly some of our aging farmers who may not be able to go back and forth every day. The cocoa is one that does not require such intense um, labor at, at, for the, throughout the year. And so hopefully we could help the farmers to, to, um, to get back into production where cocoa is concerned. So what we're doing here is, is having a conversation with the, with the field officers, ensuring that we understand what information needs to be, to be gathered, have the conversation with the farmer, and we're also going to be looking at opportunities to fund some of what the farmers are requiring. We recognize that labor is a challenge. We recognize that the cost of inputs in terms of pest and disease control, particularly rodents and so on, are, are, are very expensive. And so as a department, we look to see what opportunities are there for, to provide funding, not only funding for, um, for production side of things, but also the, the, the mapping of the value chain in particular, and also issues related to enhancing what the, the processors are doing. At the height of the sector, St. Lucia produced 160 tons of cocoa in 1976. But in 2015, the last year data is available, the figure stood at 26 tons. Officials hope the outreach exercises and conversations on the ground with farmers will rekindle interest in an industry teeming with potential. Winston Springer Jr., HDS News Force.